Zamir Tsarfati, uh, it's almost 2 a.m. This is why I look like that. But um, uh, it's one of the toughest nights uh, I've had. Um, and that has to do with what is going on in Israel. In my last update here, I told you that we are in a very, very tough and dangerous situation. Um, and of course, I, I knew what I was talking about. Uh, I want to give you an explanation of what exactly is going on here. Um, in Tel Aviv, I can still smell the smoke. I'm here. I was about to do something, but apparently I'm going to have to go home. Uh, I, I cannot stay here. Um, but... Um, I, I can smell the smoke, I can hear the, the mob, and I can, I can hear the ambulances and the, the police and the demonic chanting of brainwashed mob outside in the streets. Um, I'm going to wait for some of you to connect. Uh, I know that people are watching now from the Philippines and from... Uh, the United States. I know Europe is all asleep. I should be asleep as well, but I can't sleep when my country is burning. So uh, let me see. I see Australia is in the house. Who else is here? Canada is in the house. Probably should use my glasses. Um, I don't know if you're following me on Telegram, but if you're not, then you probably don't know that uh, Israel is literally on the brinks of a civil war. And we also see some suspicious movements around us on the Syrian border and even in Egypt, believe it or not. Um, <clears throat> um, let me see who else is here. California is in the house. Oklahoma is in the house. Okay, so listen, uh, I think I need to pray before I, I start. And then I'll explain what happened in the last 48 hours. Because a lot of you may be confused. Um, so let's pray. Father, you know, this is your country. That's your nation. These are your people. As Moses said, they're yours. So you need to lead us. If you're not leading us, we're not moving. So, Father, I ask that, uh, I know you're allowing all of this, but I ask that you, you will bring about some sanity and clarity in this crazy, chaotic, and demonic uh, time that we have right now here in Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, shalom everyone. It's Amir Tzalfati. It's 2 a.m. in Israel. I'm in Tel Aviv. I just arrived a few hours ago. I'm on my way to record my audio version for the book that is coming out soon. This book has never been more relevant than it is right now. Has the tribulation begun? And... Um, Couple few days ago, I was giving you a an update about how dangerous the situation that Israel is in right now. A lot of people thought I'm exaggerating, but uh, I wasn't. I wasn't exaggerating at all. In fact, most of the Israelis are not asleep right now. It's 2 a.m. No one believes that we got to this point. Um, if you're not following me on Telegram, you probably don't see what the Arabs are saying. The Palestinians are actually saying Israel has fallen. Every possible Arab news channel is now reporting live from Israel. Every Russian speaking channel is now reporting live from Israel as if there are no wars in Syria or in Ukraine or elsewhere. This is right now what the world is dealing with. Now let me explain 
what is going on here? Some of you are saying, Amir, you're reporting about chaos, but can you at least explain why? Who is doing what and why? Okay, so first of all, ever since Netanyahu was elected on November 1st, it was evident that the left will not let it go. Just like that. It was evident in the leader of the opposition, Lapid, who was the shortest term prime minister in our history, four months only, he said, we're going to take millions to the street to topple this government. He already warned everyone that uh, he is going to try to topple the government. What you probably don't know is that because of Netanyahu's conservative views, he's not liked by a lot of progressive liberal countries and governments and organizations such as George Soros's. And so billions of dollars were poured into what they call protests. And, and they were looking for an excuse. Okay, what are we going to protest? Okay, we're going to protest the fact that Netanyahu's uh, coalition partners are dark, very, 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 um, uh, they, they call them uh, backward thinking, uh, primitive, religious, orthodox Jews. That's what they said. And, but then it didn't work. But then uh, Netanyahu's ticket for this, you know, election was judicial reform. Israel has a very difficult situation with a Supreme Court that took so much power to its hand that no one ever gave it to him. It's a Supreme Court that is even electing its own judges. Only court in the world that the government doesn't have any say here. Uh, the, official, the elected officials cannot really say a word. So Netanyahu said, it's about time we're going to change this. This is what I was elected for. And so the judicial reform is about having the coalition, the government, the power, to appoint two judges. This is the, this is it. To appoint two judges, and even that only when the others are retire. So one now, another one in a year and a half, and the third and the fourth will be also with the, you know, the opposition and the judges' um, approval as well. That's it. Over the choice of two judges that it's not even now. Hundreds of thousands of people were sent to the streets, incited as if this is the end of democracy. This is dictatorship. This is totalitarian government. We are on the brinks of civil war. This is the end of Israel. And they were brainwashing the people for the last 12 weeks that the minute this legislation is going to pass, it's the end of this country. And that began a phenomenon that was unknown to us before. A lot of people who are serving in the military on reserve duty decided that if this government will pass this legislation, they will not serve in the, in the army anymore. Which means that pilots won't go to their units to fly and intelligence units will not go to so basically they politicize the military they're saying well we don't like this government and the views so we're not going to you know go to the military and volunteer to our reserve duty well israel was known to be a country where its military is of the people above and beyond politics we're all together in it so what happened is this, listen to this. On Thursday, the defense minister, who is surrounded by generals, who are part of the deep state, he told Netanyahu, uh, oh, you know, he actually told the media that he's about to give a speech. Netanyahu heard about it and summoned him to his office as a what are you going to talk about? I mean, 
are you're part of our party and we're moving forward with the judicial reform. Well, the defense minister said, okay, I'll accept that. What he did, he waited for Netanyahu to fly to London. And while Netanyahu was in London, and London is two hours behind us, so when Shabbat was over here, Saturday night, it wasn't over yet in London. And Netanyahu could not go and respond to anything. And the defense minister, Yoav Gallant, came on camera last night without telling the prime minister, without coordinating with him, and officially said, it's time to stop the legislation. Netanyahu summoned him. He returned this morning. He summoned uh, Gallant to his office and he said, well, I can't trust you anymore. Not only that you never told me you're going to say that, you waited for me to be away and you just said that. Plus, you're not really condemning and you're not fighting this new phenomena of politicization of the military, allowing soldiers to just say, or officers or pilots, to just, you know, take a political stand and choose not to come to their units anymore. Now, you know, I, all the civilians here, we pay taxes to actually get those people to become pilots. They're not doing me a favor. We paid for it. And so they cannot choose, well, I will fly this F-15 only when it's a government that I like. That's not a luxury we have here. Well, and this is it, folks. Netanyahu summoned the defense minister a few hours ago and later on said that he's fired. The minute the liberal progressive left heard that the defense minister that became their darling right now overnight was fired. That was the end. Hundreds of thousands were storming to the streets. But the most, I think, the most um, severe event tonight is that protesters in Jerusalem literally broke the barricades that the police put next to the residence of Benjamin Netanyahu and they managed to get very, very close to the residence. Thankfully, the Secret Service has another set of barricades that they could not pass, but it was a complete failure of the security around the perimeter of the prime minister's house. But that shook us to our core because for us, another political assassination or something like that is just unthinkable. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel, we're, we're in a chaos right now. Now, Netanyahu might say, I'm probably going to find out in a few minutes, that he is postponing the legislation or he's stopping it. We don't know. But guess what's going to happen? if he's going to stop it. I, I'll tell you what's going to happen. That means that the anarchists will say, well, anarchy works. All we need to do is burn tires in the main freeways, stop the traffic, not allow ambulances to reach people, not allowing people to reach hospitals. We'll just paralyze the country. It pays off because now the government is finally changing its mind. So you understand that if anarchy will pay off, this government will not be able to do anything in the future because everything that they will do that the others don't like will immediately be met with anarchy. So while I'm talking to you, it's 2 a.m. They're still protesting. The road is packed with tens of thousands of people. Ambulances and police. I mean, the police here is a disaster. The commander of the Tel Aviv police is actually a rock star among the protesters because he's allowing them all of this and they know that. He's part of it. This is the deep state that is, I know in many countries you have it. In Israel, this is it. Part of the 
military, part of the police, it's definitely in government offices, and it's in the judicial branch. That's what we're trying to get rid of right now. And they will not allow it. You know, the type of brainwashing in the last few weeks was, you know, I saw text messages that they're sending each other. Tomorrow might be the last day that you can have access to Google. The day after tomorrow might be the last day that you'll, uh, you'll ever use um, uh, Instagram, whatever. Um, just so you know, this judicial reform will give the government the power to uh, release criminals, the power to um, separate women from men uh, uh, in different places. Listen, they are crazy. They, they, they brainwash the people. They, they, they cause so much panic among the people. No wonder why they're protesting like this. They really think it's the end of the world for us. So much has happened. And when Netanyahu finally on Thursday was able to, I don't know if you know that, but for the last two week, two months, Netanyahu could not even talk. And you're asking, why couldn't he talk? Well, <laughs> the left made, made sure that they will put a gag order on the prime minister because he has some ongoing, you know, process in court. So he cannot talk about the judicial reform. How can a prime minister of a country not talk about the one thing that brings this country down? How can he not talk? So they threaten him to declare him unfit. Well, in Israel, the law can only declare a prime minister unfit if he's medically unfit. Well, we smelled that they started looking for other interpretations to the law. So the coalition legislated, offered a bill and voted that if, you, if it's not clear enough for you, well, unfit means medically unfit. That's it. And from the moment that bill was finally um, voted for and approved in the parliament Thursday night, that's when Netanyahu was finally able to open his mouth because now they don't have the weapon of declaring him unfit anymore. So now he gave a whole speech of explaining to people, this is not what people are telling you it is. We're not going to hurt women. We're not going to hurt the rights of the LGBTQ movement. We're not going to separate people. This is all propaganda and lies that people are trying to tell you because we are going to stop having the judges electing themselves. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Enough is enough. You know, Israel is the only Supreme Court that is not just interpreting laws, but is, listen to me, creating their own. They actually say, the law might say A, but we don't think it's reasonable. So we are going to actually rule B. What do you mean reasonable? Nobody asks you if it's reasonable. You see, they pack the court with active liberals and of course, their reason is different than the reason of what's reasonable to the liberals is not reasonable to me. And therefore, although most of the Israelis are conservatives, the Supreme Court is all liberal. So what we're trying to do is change it and allow the Supreme Court to reflect all the society. Of course, they don't want that. Look, the deep state is in action. The Supreme Court is inciting and allowing that. And they literally don't care that on November 1st, 2022, the vast majority of the Jewish people in this country voted for Netanyahu. They don't care. They don't care. You see, in the name of democracy, they don't want democracy. They actually wish that the military will say to Netanyahu, we're no longer listening to you. They wish for a military coup. <laughs> I mean, and the number one thing they chant is democracy, democracy. And I'm like, how can you even say that word when everything you do is exactly the opposite? 
Now, if you really look at the flags, that all they want is a secular country to forget its Jewish roots, to completely disconnect it from the Bible and from conservative ideas. Half of their flags are Israeli and half are LGBTQ. And look at all the footage. They used to have Palestinian flags as well, but they realized it doesn't look good on camera. We cannot call it a national protest and use somebody else's flag. So they stopped doing that. The ads in the newspapers, the billboards in the streets, the millions of flags, the stickers, the stages, the microphones, the, the, all of those things cost tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars. And they've been doing that for three months now, ever since the government was elected. Powerful people, bankers, industrialists, all the deep state and the globalists of this country and around the world are funding a campaign to bring down this country. But I think that the, the dangerous part of all of this is that we're not surrounded by Switzerland and Belgium. You know, the Iranians are humiliating the Americans right now in, in Syria. Three times, Iranian proxies fired rockets and suicide drones on American bases in Al Omar, in, uh, El, uh, in the Conco um, gas field and oil field in eastern Syria. Three times, America only responded once and if you read my telegram, you know that in the last two years, American bases were attacked over 70 times and you only responded three times. America's deterrence is, do not, does not exist anymore. No wonder, no wonder why Saudi Arabia ran to the open arms of China to be now the mediator between them and Iran. So Israel is very weak inside. America is weak elsewhere in the Middle East. And the Iranian proxies are arming themselves to their teeth. And we see movements in Lebanon, in Hezbollah, we see in Syria, we see in Iran, they're enriching uranium already. They've got enough uranium for a bomb already and we know that i've said that many times everybody now agree this is it we are now literally waiting for the strike now the funny thing is the reason why they're not striking yet is this they're not sure if the strike will actually help or destroy. They're afraid that if they strike now, it will actually keep, make the Israelis come back together and fight back. They actually want to see us tearing each other apart. So if there is one reason why they're not striking now is because they love what they see of us doing to ourselves. So this is the situation. Now, if some of you are asking me, Amir, wait a minute, I thought biblically Israel is going to thrive. If Israel is, I mean, where are we biblically? Well, I'll tell you where are we biblically. Yeah, Israel thrived and we are where we are today. But what I see is strong delusion. What I see is a nation ready for the Antichrist. What I see is what I know will eventually happen when two thirds will die and perish and only the last he will bring through the fire and refine. What I see now is a nation that cannot win a single war without the supernatural 
intervention of God himself, which is exactly what Ezekiel 38 and 39 describes. In not even a single verse in those chapters about this future war that is coming, the nation of Israel is mentioned as a heroic, strong, and capable one. In, if anything, it's going to be God using supernatural things and natural disasters such as an earthquake to bring down our enemies. So, we are in that point in history where that war can begin and we are, that's physically and militarily, and spiritually and mentally, my nation is ready for the Antichrist. Absolutely. At least this country, this city, Tel Aviv, no doubt, once he rises, they'll follow him. So, um, pray. Pray. Look, I tell you to pray because I know that the enemy is plotting and miraculously we are, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still standing here. Look, over the last two months alone, 150 terror attacks were thwarted. 150. Every day, every month, every week, they're plotting. And they're trying and they're plotting and they're trying there's so much going on there's a lot of stuff i cannot tell you that is happening uh, across the borders but i will tell you folks this this country is a miracle it's a miracle not because we're special not because we're great not because we're better i mean i'm looking outside we're not better it's a miracle because in spite of everything I see here, we're still standing. It's a miracle because in spite of all the brainwashing, demonic presence that are just 200 yards from me, we're still standing. It's a miracle that this country still survives. It's a miracle that this country still functions. No one can take credit for it but God. So I'm asking you to pray like never before for this country. It's a nation that is dear to God. It's a nation that is uh, chosen for a reason and for a season. It's a nation that has a plan. It's a nation that God used to bring blessing to the rest of the world. It's a nation that God used to bring the word of God to the world. It's a nation that God used to bring the son of God to the world. It's a nation that needs today your prayers. And I beg you to pray. And uh, again, I'm reporting. No, I'm going to... I'm not going to be able to do what I came here to do. I'm going to have to turn around tomorrow. Hopefully, the roads will be clear to um, go back home. I'm not in the state of mind where I can just do business as usual. But I'm telling you, more than ever before, I know now why God put on my heart to write this book, Has the Tribulation Begun? Now, tons of people are telling me, I mean, they forward to me videos that that's it, the mark of the beast has been revealed. We finally know, we finally see. We... You are going to be attacked by so much sensationalism. Please, please guard your hearts. And um, this book is the most evangelistic one I've ever written. And this book is the most timely one I've ever written. So has the tribulation begun? I'm, I'll eventually record the book uh, for audio at some time, but I can't do it tomorrow. All right, listen, thank you for uh, watching. Please press the button, the share button, as well as the prayer, prayer button in your heart. Um, and uh, also help me to spread the news and to bring clarity and avoid confusion. 
So you can go to hasthetribulationbegun.com and, and look if you can get it and just give it also to some other people. Thank you. God bless you. I love you. Please share this video.